It was the year 1997 when the engines took over. In that year, the supercomputer Deep Blue defeated Garry Kasparov in a match over six games by three and a half to two and a half. This was the first time a reigning world chess champion was defeated by a computer under tournament conditions. In the Hanover tournament of 1991, I had the chance to play against the predecessor of Deep Blue, which was running under the name Deep Sword 2. IBM sponsored this event, maybe hoping that their brainchild was already in the state to outclass the participating German grandmasters. But this didn't happen. The engine still would have to wait a couple of years more until that time would finally have come. My game plan was pretty clear. I wanted to avoid an open battle where the reckoning power, the calculating power of the engine would get the better of me. So I played uh, the modern defense in order to transpose into a king's Indian position, which finally happens here after move four. Now the engine chose the Zemis variation F3. Uh, it's not a bad line for white, but I think better is knight f3, the classical variation. As an aside, I created a chessable course from the white's perspective, um, featuring the bayonet attack, which I think is white's strongest uh, line against black's main variation here. Right now I'm in the process of creating another chessable course, which is dealing with all the sidelines. Um, black avoiding the bayonet attack. But now let's go back to our game. So we had the same -ish variation on the board. Castles, bishop e3. The problem that I see for the same -ish variation is the move c5. I think that black is very close to equality here, which he shouldn't be allowed to have in the King's Indian. White now can take the sacrifice, but it doesn't yield him a lot. In our game, however, the move e5 happened. Back then, I was still under the impression of uh, Garry Kasparov's uh, many great games with this line, for instance, against Karpov. So e5 was quite fashionable back then. Now white can play d5 or knight g2, which the engine did. Let's, or let's talk about a supercomputer rather, it's not an engine. So deep thought 2, he had, uh, excuse me, the male version. So it, it had um, the size of the wardrobe, uh, at least. It was placed in uh, New York and uh, yeah, it was quite an impressive apparatus, right? Knight g2, c6, queen d2, knight bd7, normal stuff until here. And now there are two lines, two main lines. One is d5, the other is queenside castling. Both lines con contain roughly 1000 games. The engine played d5 here. Let me quickly show what I suggest to you against queenside castling. Remember, this was played in roughly 1000 games. And now there's a very interesting move, which is um, proposed by Stockfish. This game, uh, I mean, this move was only played in four games out of 1000. It's a pawn sacrifice, so it, it doesn't come automatically for black, but I think it's black's best move. Let's go a bit deeper into it, because I know many of you might be King's Indian players and uh, are interested in what is going on here theoretically. So now white can decline the offered pawn, king b1, but then we play b4, knight b5, d5, queen takes b4, a6, knight c3, rook e8, and black has enough compensation. White's king is exposed. 
So later we will see rook b8 and there's some pressure down the b-file. Now let's have a look at what happens if white takes on the pawn outright. Knight takes b5, d5 again, a counter strike in the center, d takes e5. I'll give you only um, an example variation because this is not uh, the topic of the game. It's just a theoretical uh, digression here. Knight takes e5, knight ec3, and now there was a game, Istatescu Perdin, Avon 2003, where black played the mistake on bishop b7. So Stockfish suggests a6, knight a3, queen c7, takes bishop f5. Now you see that the king is uh, under some pressure here. So White's king doesn't feel really comfortable in this position. Bishop f4, knight takes d5, yeah, that's possible. Queen takes d5, rook fd8. Queen c4, takes, 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 takes. And here black would be better because actually um, after knight a3, white should not take the knight here on uh, a3. Okay, so this is an equalizing line for black after uh, this move castling long side here on move 9. The engine played the better move d5. I took and now the engine deviated from the main path. So we have like 1000 games in play, mas o menos. And the engine played a move which today was only played 93 times. The engine recaptured with a knight. Let me just give you a qu quick impression what might happen after c takes d5. This move gives white the advantage. For instance, a6, g4, h5, g5, knight h7, knight c1, f6, black has to fight for space on the king side, takes, takes, bishop e2, Bishop g5, activating the bishop, queen e3, king g7, defending the g-pawn, knight e3, and now b6, followed by knight c5, might be black's best move here, but white is uh, slightly better here, maybe half a pawn ahead. So while black's position might be playable, I, I wouldn't be too fond of it. That's why I would uh, prefer the move c5 in this position. But now coming back to our game. The engine played knight takes d5. Why? Why did the engine deviate from the main path here? Well, you have to know that the engine, I mean Deep, Deep Thought 2, had a team of advisors, right? The project Deep Thought 2 had a team of grandmasters and I, I guess, if I remember correctly, it was uh, Joel Benjamin who was the main theoretical advisor. And of course, he constructed uh, the opening repertoire of uh, Deep Thought 2 uh, in a way that the arising position type would favor uh, the engine's qualities. An engine needs an open position so that the calculative powers come to fruition, right? So white uh, did not close, uh, the engine did not close the position with c takes d5, but rather than that uh, was aspiring to get an open battle. Exactly the thing I wanted to avoid. So knight takes d5 and now uh, after c takes d5, f5, uh, black is doing okay. This position will finally lead to equality. Um, it doesn't make any sense, you know, for, for white to uh, exchange the knight c3 against the knight f6 because, uh, as you can see here, as a, there is no knight on f6 any longer, black can play f5 right away. And also, in, in a position with a space advantage, which white has, uh, you don't want to exchange minor pieces. So if you want to go for the c takes d5 structure, you should do it right now here um, on move 10. 
c takes d5 here. But once you took here on d5, it is not really logical to recapture now with a c pawn. So this was not a deep thought intention. Deep thought took with the queen. Now we have a bit more of an opening, uh, uh, an open character uh, uh, of a position, right? The d file is open, there is pressure against the d6 pawn. It's hanging right now. That's why I played knight b6. It is very important to play the knight to b6 and not to f6 because uh, I also want to exert pressure against the c4 pawn. This is very important for black's follow-up strategy. So now the queen is hanging and deep thought went with his queen to b5. Um, yeah, I should always say it's queen. But you know, in, Ger in German language, we, we often use a, a male or female and, and not the neutral form. Um, so please, um, apolog <laughs> my apologies, right, for that habit of mine here. So for me, this, this monster of a computer is, you know, has some, also some male touch to it, you know, like br brutality, if you, if you understand what I mean. But now let's go to uh, how the position uh, unfolded. Queen b5 was a gay move. Let's first have a look at queen d3. Um, this is your alternative. Then bishop e6 would come attacking the c4 pawn. This is what I was referring to. With a knight on f6, we are now winning a tempo here with black. b3 defending the pawn. d5, that's a strong move. It's a novelty actually. This is a best move here. C takes D and now Bishop takes D5. This position is equal now. White should now play Knight C3, declining the sacrifice. And now after Bishop E6, we see equality here with a symmetric pawn structure. Of course, you are curious um, what would happen now if White does accept the Bishop sacrifice. So I show you. E takes D5, question mark. E4, um, opening up the bishop's diagonal so the rook is under attack. Now, if the queen would defend the rook, we would see knight takes d5 <coughs> attacking the bishop. Bishop d4, and now knight b4 is very strong. If now bishop takes g7, this check is uh, very annoying because the king would be drawn into the open. So now king d2 would uh, be forced, after which. Um, I guess already knight f2 would be winning the queen. So after knight b4, bishop g7 doesn't work. f takes e4 instead, I can offer you. But now after queen h4 check, g3, queen e4, black is winning. Okay, so that is quite satisfactory for black, the move queen d3. Now let's have a look at what happened after queen b5. Here we can play bishop e6 as well, which followed one move later. So it, 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 it would be only a transposition of moves. I, however, did something different. So I first played another move, which is very instructive here. It might not come automatically for you if you are not acquainted with this um, pawn structure. Now I give you uh, a couple of seconds to think about it or to press the stop button, right? Okay, I will show it to you. I played bishop h6. Yeah, this is not losing the bishop because it is defended, uh, defended indirectly. So now black has a choice. White has a choice to either capture the bishop or play bishop f2. Deep thought played bishop f2. Let's have a look at bishop takes h6. Of course, I would give the check here now, regaining the bishop. What did I achieve? I exchanged white's good bishop e3 versus my bad bishop g7. Look at the pawn structure. Now white is left with a bad bishop here on f1 and I have still a good bishop here on c8. Now the dark squares um, in white's camp are quite vulnerable and I, Black is about 
to enter the square e3 with his queen. This position is still as equal, but I think it's more difficult to play for white. There was a game, Stuhlreiter against uh, Kral Slovakia 2001, where black actually won the encounter. Now let's go back to our game. The machine played bishop f2. With the insertion of the two moves, I of course improved my bishop from g7 to h6, where it now controls quite a nice diagonal. So I definitely made progress uh, the last move. Now bishop e6 comes attacking the pawn c4, knight c3, and defending the pawn with the bishop. This position is now really interesting in terms of chess strategy. You can learn a lot about chess strategy if you think in more abstract terms here about this position because it is representative for any other position where you see a matchup where one side has the static advantage and the other side the dynamic advantage. Here it's white having the static advantage because white is having a bit more space and the better pawn structure. We see a weak pawn here on d6 in my position. Now, if white only would be able, <coughs> pardon me, if white would be able to consolidate his position, <coughs> let's say with bishop e2 um, and casting short, he would stand clearly better. So this is how it works in this matchup, static versus dynamic advantage. The side with a dynamic advantage has to hurry up. He cannot linger because um, consolidation of the opponent's position has to be avoided. Black has a lead in development that gives him the dynamic advantage. So black has uh, to forge the iron um, while it is still hot. So black has to play quickly, um, exploiting the, fa the fact that white's king is still in the center. So I did it with queen c7, attacking the c4 pawn another time. White has to defend the pawn with b3, but while doing so, I could activate another piece. This is the queen, also connecting the rooks. So I improved my position a bit farther, but somehow I have to break open white's position in order to exploit my let in development. I need a pawn break. So what kind of pawn breaks are available? Well, I could play f5, but after f5, white would answer bishop d3, and then what did I achieve? Nothing. f4 doesn't bring me any gains, and if I take on um, f4, the bishop would recapture. I would only have activated white's pieces. So are there any other pawn breaks you see here? Actually, there are two of them. I played the more natural one, but the engine indicates that I could also have done this <laughs> immediate d5 pawn break. Actually, I didn't really see that, and it's very complicated. And remember, my game plan was not to complicate matters, not to bring about uh, tactical uh, uh, complexity, right? d5 is a really difficult move to spot. I, I show you how this works out. e takes d5, knight d5, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes d5. Of course, um, he cannot take with a pawn because we, I would have a check here, winning the rook. So queen d5, rook a d8, attacking the queen, queen c5, check. And of course now I must avoid um, the exchange of queens, but after queen d7, intending maybe queen d3 check, this position is unclear. Um, white has an extra piece, but his king is trapped in the middle of the board and, and black uh, can exploit that. So this is a possibility. But I, being a human being, thinking uh, in 
more more human uh, slow paced terms so I played the other pawn break and my pawn break is b7 b5 still not easy to see it here so it needs preparation but very soon it will come so I have to move the knight back to d7 the knight did its job on b6 first it let uh, the bishop uh, out to e6 it also by attacking the c4 pawn weakened the square c3 so now it returns to d7 in order to unblock the b pawn now deep thought made a mistake he sort of should have played uh, bishop e2 and after a6 knight e5 takes takes b5 castling queen uh, knight b6 attacking the queen queen d3 takes takes rook c8 look now i have a pawn to play against the weak pawn c4 and now c1 is not available to white's rooks because my bishop is so well placed on h6 so rook fb1 takes this is a pawn sacrifice white has to engage in and here the position is roughly equal white has enough compensation for the pawn but not more but the engine played queen b4 question mark well the move is anticipating a6 and also um, preparing knight b5 uh, together with the idea of rook d1 so putting some pressure let's do it in red putting some pressure on on the on the d6 pawn right so you see here but i play a6 preventing knight b5 rook d1 now the pawn d6 is hanging but that's not a problem for me I played rook fc8 there's also an alternative well there's not only one there was a game in Shirov against uh, Kamsky played um, two years after this game where Kamsky um, disimproved on, on my game so he played the um, inferior move knight c5 and after bishop e2 Shirov was slightly better now knight c5 is not a good move here so either my move rook fc8 or the alternative move b5 i could have done this outright for instance if c takes b5 double question mark a5 white is losing the knight c3 if white takes on d6 also bad queen a5 attacking the knight now b4 queen a3 would be very bad would be losing for white the c3 knight is under attack so let's uh, say queen d3 instead of b4 but he now after b takes c4 b c4 rook a c8 intending mm, bishop c4 i'm also winning here with black the best move is knight d5 after b5 and now after bishop takes d5 rook in d5 rook fc8 we would see a transposition to the game okay in our game here i played rook fc8 outright intending b5 the soft spot here in white's position is the knight c3 so i i, I want to get the c4 pawn out of the way if possible now white has a couple of moves but most of them are bad the engine played knight d5 question mark but let's see what else could um, the engine have done queen d6 mistake queen f5 um, and now after queen d3 b5 i'm winning as well as after b4 queen a3 also one for black another move would be a4 um, preventing a future b5 right but now bishop f8 is strong threatening d5 with an attack on the queen so knight d5 takes and now whatever white does it comes with a certain set of problems 
I think the worst move is rook d5 because after b5 I'm opening up either the c file or the a file or the b file no matter what white is doing. This is completely lost for white. cd5 is also bad because now I can also open up the queen side with b5. Takes, takes, let's say bishop d3, knight c5, castles, takes, bishop h6, activating the bishop, queen b5. Well, black ha uh, white has to do something so he can take the pawn here. But now um, black is invading along the second rank. Rook dd1, rook a2. Well, I have some, some more lines. We are now move 26. My analysis goes until... Uh, move 36, 10 more moves, but I spare you with that. So the threat is now bishop e3. Um, bottom line is that uh, black is clearly better here. White has problems with his second rank. Now another move, maybe the best move here is e takes d5. So better than rook takes or c takes d5. But now mm, after let's say a5, uh, Queen c3, bishop g7, bishop e2, knight c5. Black is slightly better. It's also very interesting to look at the position uh, from the perspective of pawn majorities. As you can see, white's pawn majority on the queen side is uh, securely blocked, it's immobile, while black's majority on the king side is very alive and kicking. Black wants to come up with f5 and e4. So Black has a very attractive position and is slightly better here. Now let's come back to our game. The engine played uh, knight to d5. We just had a look at queen d6 takes, a4 and bishop e2. No, actually I'm still owing you the, the, um, the best move, right? The best move for, for white um, is bishop e2 here instead of knight e5. Okay, let's have a look uh, of what happens after that. b5, castles, takes, 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 rook a3, rook d1. Now I'm up a pawn, but white has counterplay. Um, wants to play bishop f8, and after these moves here, finally, Mm, the position is equal because let's say after bishop takes f8, rook f8, um, white's rook is quite active and my king on h5 here is a bit out of play. So this position is drawn. That would have been the truth about the position, so white's best move. But instead the engine played knight d5. I took rook d5 and here I made my first and only mistake in the game. I played actually a very natural move and I, I really doubt that better players than me would, would have done a better job here. Because the solution is a bit hidden and my move is just the most natural one. And it was also successful in the game, by the way. So the best move here, according to today's engines, is rook, uh, a bishop f8. It's not geared to de meekly defending the d6 pawn. The threat is to play the knight f6 and after the rook moves to play d5 with an attack on the queen. So now the queen has to move away. I, I, give, I give you one line only, right? I have a couple of moves here, but let's just uh, give you one line. c3, queen c3. Knight f6, and now rook d1 would be bad already after d5. Rook d2, it's the only move. d5, e takes d5, and now a5, threatening bishop b4. And now white is uh, clearly worth. He has to play c5, but after bishop c5, well, at least white can exchange queen, so the king is now not in imminent danger anymore. But of course, the d5 pawn is weak and black has a lead in development here. d6, check, rook d8, maybe followed by e4 or rook c6 winning the d6 pawn. 
black is clearly better in this position. So this would have been the, the best path I, I, I could have chosen. But instead I played b5 and I repeat it again, it's, it's the most natural move and I think many of my colleagues would have done exactly the same. The engine now um, blundered. I will uh, show you in a bit why. I will explain this to you. The engine played a4. Let's have a look at all the alternative moves. Queen takes d6 is bad. It's also losing. Check. Queen a2 invading uh, white's position. Queen d7. Okay, now white has an extra piece, but it doesn't do him much good. Queen b4, king e2. You see the king is in the middle of the action here. Queen takes c4. Check. Of course, we don't change queens here. And finally, the rook um, d1 can be exchanged and then the other rook will be brought into play and, and white obviously will not survive that. Another move is c takes b5, uh, question mark. a5, very strong move. So now um, my queen is taboo yeah, because white would just uh, lose material after rook takes c1, rook takes c1 check. So queen d6 takes check check bishop f8 queen takes d7 now the bishop comes from the other side and well after rook d2 rook d8 the rook d2 will be lost another move is rook d1 in this position here but after knight c5 queen c3 queen b8 queen c2 knight e6 the knight is maybe heading to d4, bishop e2, a5, castles, a4, opening up the queen side, and now after g3, preventing knight, f4, giving a bit air to the king, takes, takes, b4, um, black is, let me have a look, slightly better. So this is a decent line, but we see here now a weakness on b3. So black will follow up with rook a3 and then maybe knight c5 and then yeah the b3 pawn is under attack black has also the idea maybe to double heavy pieces in the a file and penetrate on the square um, on the square a2 so this is a difficult position for a white to play definitely bishop e2 would have been the best move and now let's say after bishop f8, queen c3, knight b6, rook d2, bishop h6, rook c2. Now either a5 with equality or d5. Takes, takes, takes. Here I have enough compensation for the pawn because white has problems to castle short. I think I would rather play the position uh, with black because I have the better king safety here. So this is an equal line according to the engine. But in our game, um, well, luckily, the engine played a4. And, well, the engine wanted to prevent, I, let, me, let me just uh, show again what would have happened after queen d6. a4 was geared to prepare this move. After queen takes d6, you will remember that I showed you the, the, the line queen a5 before queen a2. And by placing the pawn on a4, the engine wanted to block the a file. So let's now go back to the game. The engine wanted to close the a file. I took the pawn and now queen takes d6. So no queen a5 check, queen takes a2 anymore. So the engine thought by itself, well, now I attack the queen um, and, and the knight d7 first and foremost. So black will have to exchange queens and I might get away here with a draw as white. This is what the engine might have thought. But actually I was not compelled to exchange queens as you will see in a bit. My next move was very strong. Queen b7. I wanted to exploit 
the really problematic position of White's king by not exchanging queens. I was reckoning with uh, having to give up my knight. I was willing to do so because I saw that the attack that was to come was quite ferocious. So what happened? Why, why didn't the engine see this? Um, it's about a typical problem computers have. It's called the uh, horizon of calculation. So the engine was calculating that it was winning the knight on d7, but it couldn't calculate the lines deep enough to see that it was getting checkmated. So uh, the mate was behind the horizon of calculation. That was the explanation for what is now to come. So let's see what's possible now. The engine took the pawn on a4. After queen takes d7, things are quite easy for me here. I give a check. King e2, a takes b3, and you see now the b pawn is running. So this is absolutely impossible for white to play. Another move would be bishop e2 in order to castle away to safety. But after rook c7, defending my knight, of course, there is a threat of simply playing a takes b3. So now after b takes a4, bishop f8 will come. And you see the queen is gone. White is losing his queen. Also after b4, and that's the same. White is losing the queen. So after queen b7, exclamation mark, the engine had to take on a4. Now comes a very good move for me again. So I, I really was up to the occasion here, or I, I rose to the occasion in, in this position. I forced the engine to grab my knight. Bishop f8, exclamation mark. Queen takes d7, and now queen b4 check. I prepared this check by playing bishop f8, driving the queen away from the square d6. Now what can white do? The engine played rook d2, but that was quite easy then after, afterwards. The alternative would have been um, king to d1, but after queen b3 check, now there are two lines, queen, uh, king e2 check, king e3 check. Bishop b4, threatening rook to c2. Well, threatening is maybe not the right word because it, it, it's coming no matter what. It's just like this is what follows, right? And you see that the king is caught in kind of a mating net there on e2. The other move would be king d2, but after bishop b4, king c1, Rook fb8, just following, followed by uh, bishop a3 and then penetrating with the heavy pieces down the b-file, I also would give checkmate rather quickly here in this position. After queen before check, the engine did not play king d1, it played rook d2. But now things are easy. Rook d8 is just winning the queen now, right? The queen has to take rook takes bishop e3 this is no challenge anymore i think the king d1 line would have put me more to the test it is true that i could have uh, mated him by invading down the b file but i mean just imagine the psychological pressure resting on my shoulders right um there would have still been the danger that I, 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 I screwed it up, you know, somehow. But here it's really, there is no, no chance of, of blowing it, right? It's so easy now because there are no queens anymore on, on, the white, on white's camp. And um, I even have a material advantage here. So I played bishop c5. Uh, yeah, it's game over here. The engine now played bishop g5, there is not much to do. And now rook d2 maybe would have been the best, but what I did was also good. Rook d6, king e2, and now I took on d2. 
And now, while I was thinking what to do after bishop takes d2, should I take on uh, a4 or should I first be greedy and take the c4 pawn? Um, I think taking on a4 is better, leaving the bishop f1 um, looking onto his own c4 pawn. So after bishop d2, queen e4 is, is an easy win because I have the, uh, the passed a pawn, which could just run down the board then. While I was pondering what to do after bishop d2, the operator of uh, the engine, so the representative of IBM, um, he was coming to the board and reached me his hand as a sign of resignation. I was winning after only 28 moves and I was quite happy, as you can imagine, and a bit proud because I beat the engine on his own turf, right? It was not like a positional trend, uh, um, tr trench warfare maneuvering game. It was an open battle where I could beat the engine. Please write in the comments whether you like that game or what, what you think about it. And yes, thank you for watching. Bye bye.